test, test. Hello, yeah, I hope my microphone is working. My webcam is a little bit wobbly right now, so I have to, I can't touch my desk. I just wanted to, I'm listening to some music over here. You can't hear that. Uh, but I thought I would just discuss, you know, whatever. Um, at some point in your life, you're going to have to decide what you really want to do. And I think for me, it's very clear. I'm going to pursue um, the, the path leading towards the de-urbanization of the world. Uh, I, I just feel that what we've done since the industrial age and afterwards is just so, so dead wrong. Um, we're going to have to reconsider what we've built. We've built, so to say, we've built modern civilization. And the problem with modern civilization is that it's neither modern nor civilization. It's basically a prison system in which average people, citizens, civilians have been subjected, submitted to the rules and the machinations of a gigantic machine that we call the economy. The uh, esteemed writer Ernst Jünger, the German uh, World War I veteran, famous, famously known for the book Storm of Steel. Jünger also wrote many other books and many other essays, such as one about the worker, Der Arbeiter, and he wrote a book about uh, well, in that book, The Worker, he explains how this is indeed the case. This, I mean, this is in the early 20th century when he's writing this, that the whole society has become a machine gearing up for war. And I, I think he wrote this book before World War II broke out. So he was kind of prophetic in the sense that he knew what was coming. He saw correctly that the society we are living in has become a gigantic machine people's freedoms and so on, their liberties have really been submitted to whatever serves the economy. And this is how they still do it today, however, despite the fact that we've gone through World War II, we did not get rid of this strange condition where our human lives have been submitted to, uh, are basically we are born in the service of an economic system to make profit. We have to become profitable humans, right? And that is just something... Uh, bizarrely unacceptable of course you know right you think europe okay someone is asking questions here you can see uh oh, you can see the comments on screen as well so how is europe going to compete with the rise of africa i'm concerned they may attack us actually africa is now going through their urbanization so you see them building a lot of housing comp uh, housing uh, plots full of houses uh, because they have overpopulation problem and they can't send them to Europe. They can't send them to the USA. That's impossible. There's too many of them. They have to stay in Africa, largely most of them. And so they're, they're urbanizing. And then when they urbanize, the question is, are they going to militarize and attack us? And I think that is very well possible, but not under their own leadership. They will do it under the leadership of China or Russia. Yeah. But then again, why attack Europe? Europe doesn't really have uh, much to take because Europe is really an industrial zone where you have to work very hard to live. Europe itself, as the Africans always say, doesn't have resources. So there, you can't conquer Europe. Conquering Europe means like you want to hijack a plane, but then you're required to fly it yourself. All right? And that's the problem. No, I'm not concerned that Europe will attack Africa. I'm, I think Africa will attack Europe under the leadership of the Chinese or the Russians. They're going to attack Europe. At some point, you're going to have the military equipment. And uh, I think the Russians and the, and the Chinese will want to use Africa as another, you know, another chess piece in their game to, uh, to take Western Europe away from the U.S. Because by taking Western Europe away from the U.S., uh, Russia, becomes, Russia and China become all-powerful. So that's probably what they're going to do. Africa is not underpopulated, it's overpopulated. Just like Europe is also overpopulated. It, it comes down to your carrying capacity of your territory and it's just, it's just way overpopulated. Just like India is also way overpopulated and China is overpopulated. All these places are overpopulated. 
Right. When Africa reaches billions by by the end of the century, they say. But you say your birth rates are declining drastically. Okay, so you might not reach the uh, the predictions. I know the United Nations predicts Africa should have three or four billion people by the end of the century, but this might it might not happen due to I don't know collapse of supply chains. You get a massive starvation problem. So. Yeah. The real problem is that if you have that many people and they all want to have luxury computers and cars and planes and uh, and so on, that's the real problem because that's just not possible. It's just too much because you'll have the populations of China and India, they want the same thing. It's just not doable. I think this real problem is how are you going to tell these people like, sorry, oops, you're not going to have an iPhone. You're not going to have a Tesla. They, I think they will get very angry and that might be the cause of trouble. Um, Europe is overpopulated. We should go back to maybe 100 million or so. We have 740 million people in Europe and that's too much. The carrying capacity of the continent for long-term survival is probably just 50 million or so. Maybe with technology, we can keep it at 150 million or so. But I'm, I'm basically a supporter of the Club of Rome who says that there's just too many people. I'm not, uh, I'm not really... Uh, for or uh, I'm not for what, what Elon Musk wants. He wants a planet with a hundred trillion gazillion people on it. I think that's just no. We need to think of nature. The birds and the bees also have the right to live here. I, did, I decided to make uh, fewer TikTok videos. I used to make one or two or three a day. Now maybe I'll make one or two good ones a week. I don't want to make too many videos anymore. Um, it's because, I'm, well, I don't want to be addicted to it, but I also don't want to give people everything I know anymore. I want to keep a lot more to myself instead of sharing everything. I just want to say, you know, I want to, be a bit more strategic about what I tell people. That's all. Yeah, there is no such moral authority. That's a good point, but there is no such authority. It's just about who can do what it, what they can do. In the West, we have our, our rich elites who are like vultures uh, directing, the, directing the hyenas. And so they will do whatever the hell they want. And so that's what you look at. You look at the people with the money who can command other people to do things. And so I think in the Western world, they're going to bet on robotics and they're going to try to use robots to stay powerful, which is also another problem because in my view, robots will end up being more expensive than humans. And I think there's a big risk in the Western world that they are going to bring back slavery. Why do I say that? Because if you have uh, robots, robots can be so expensive, it could be $5 million for a good robot, a household robot. A human laborer is way, way cheaper than a robot. And so you're looking at the possibility that they might, re might reintroduce slavery at some point. I think they will do something like that because like I said, these Western elites, they only care about morality as long as it benefits them. When it no longer benefits them, they change the morality. That's just how it really is, you know? Uh, someone writes that their view is that Russia can be a strong country right, and Ukraine independent. Right. I think uh, Putin's mission is really to annex the uh, West European economy and take Europe away from the US sphere so that Russia will then be more powerful uh, together with China. I think that's the whole point. They want to really overthrow the US power base. And that means you have to consider Europe, the EU is really a market. A market for 700 million consumers and they just want to take that away from the u.s so that they that so that the u.s can no longer sell burger king and mcdonald's and nike and starbucks but instead we will have russian and chinese products here and i think that's what they're trying to do yeah the west is running on reserve i agree with that yeah 
but I don't know if the East can then take over. I think it, it's possible that the whole global supply chain will simply collapse due to a shortage of oil and cheap energy. Everything goes down and that's going to be very problematic because then you'll have uh, not just a world war, but you'll have war in every country in the world due to the food shortage conflict. Uh, in Canada, I read something. In Canada, they, uh, they now have uh, a problem feeding the poor. There's not enough food in Canada to feed the poor anymore, which is crazy because after decades of mass migrating in people from Pakistan and India, all of a sudden there's hunger in Canada. The, uh, what do you call them? These uh, food banks, yeah. Food banks where people go to the food bank to get free food. Uh, there's a massive increasing demand for food stamps and food banks, and but a dwindling supply of cheap food. So cheap food is the reason why people are still calm and passive. But as soon as we start going hungry, everybody's going to be at war with everybody. Right, right. I heard that in the USA, they are uh, messing with the Bible. Yeah. It's the Jews they want to protect. You can't say that the Jews killed Christ. Because they think you might that might make you anti-Semitic. <laughs> now, the reason why we have peace on Earth is because food is cheap and everybody can afford food. So there's no reason for anybody to get angry and hungry. But once that's over, once the cheap food supplies are gone, it's just going to be total war everywhere. So nowadays I listen to synth pop and synth wave music because I like that old 80s style beat. Yeah, well, the USA seems to be controlled by Israel anyway. It's not a surprise to me that they did this. Uh, for some reason, this small group of Jewish people has more power than all the white people in the USA. Uh, I could talk a bit more about it. It's because white people in general are just quite naive, you know. I'm not, but <laughs> but I know my people well by now. And they're very naive. They're suckers. They always fall for the Nigerian scammers, you know. Do you think there's enough land to raise animals? Yes, for for some people, <laughs> uh, you can raise land. You can raise animals in, especially in northern Eurasia. There's so many vast plan, plains of uh, grassland and woodland that you might turn into grassland. Yeah. So sure, the people who are motivated to survive, they can survive as pastoralists. They will raise cattle. They will drink meat. Uh, sorry, drink milk and eat meat. They will be fine, but it will not be a majority. It will be a small group of people who can do that. Yeah, the Bolsheviks destroyed Europe. That's interesting because in World War II, we were fighting the Bolsheviks and then the Germans lost, of course. And then the Bolsheviks took over Europe, but also the USA. Basically, the Bolsheviks are in charge now, yeah. Yeah, Northern Eurasia, Russia, indeed, Scandinavia also, yeah, that indeed that territory. If you are willing to brave the cold and so on, you'll find there massive territories for, uh, for pastoralism. But your life will be different. You won't have an iPhone, but maybe you'll have a pet cyber, to, uh, a pet tiger, a snow tiger. Now, everybody will suffer food problems here. Yeah, Turkey and NATO. I think Turkey is a secret ally of Russia. And they, the U.S. constantly has to bribe Erdogan of Turkey to keep him in line. I think Turkey can switch whenever they want to. Turkey also has a lot of gold. So in principle, I think Turkey and China and Russia are preparing to uh, announce an alliance. But they'll do it when uh, when they can no longer deny it. But I think they've been, uh, they're, they're, I think Turkey is not an ally of the West. No. Yeah, food will be used for control. That's why we're getting the digital ID in the West now. But surprisingly, many third, so-called third world countries, you know, the developing world, they already have the digital ID thing anyway. 
we just don't have it in the West yet because our infrastructure was built in the 1970s. See, that's why we can't do it yet. But in the in the developing world, you started with cell phones, so they can give you a digital wallet. All right, so Western Turks, yeah, the Western Turks are probably more uh, more like Greek people, and the Eastern Turks are the real Turks, right? Do you think the USA will join BRICS? Maybe. Uh, they're all globalists, uh, so they could be working together against the people. Yeah, I think you have to imagine that the very powerful people, they all work together against everyone else. So it's not like, it's not really China against the US. It's it's the, the powerful against the poor. Yeah, what is really, what is the Western way of life? Today it's LGBT, so... I don't know. I don't think anybody's compatible compatible with that. It's nonsense. What I personally would prefer is simply my own people, like the Germanic Celtic people of Northwestern Europe, that we just cut loose from globalism. We either defend what we can defend in Europe or we find other territories wherever, maybe Siberia, who knows, but somewhere we could move to or something we can defend and then just cut loose from globalism and live as a sort of Spartan warrior cult. I prefer that, yeah. I prefer turning my people into Spartan warrior people, but then we're going to have to get rid of the leftists because they're, we can't go on with them. They are traitors. They've betrayed us. They've betrayed our future. They robbed us of the past and they stole our future. And now they think they were, we're going to fight them, fight for the, fight the Russians for them. No. When they're, if the Russians take over Europe, I think many right-wing Europeans will join the Russians. They're just going to, because who's our real enemy? It's the liberals, the leftists, the progressives. They've murdered our soul. They've destroyed our culture. They're the real enemy. Why does Turkey want to be part of the EU? I think the Trojan horse story comes to mind. They just want to be part of the EU so they can get, I don't know, just more money. That's all. And, uh, once they're part of the EU, they can say that Europe has to become Islamic and that's that they're just trying to conquer Europe, you know, just like everybody else is. Yeah, I spoke a lot about France and Africa, France, Afrique. Uh, we didn't they didn't tell us about it. When I went to school, no one ever told me that. They spoke about the Dutch colonial history and so on, but they never said anything about the fact that France still has 14 countries under its financial thumb. They still pay with the French franc there. They speak French, right? And so um, this is what Russia is trying to do with the Wagner Group. They're trying to remove France Afrique from France, and that would bankrupt the French economy. The French economy would simply die. And then the question is, do you even care? Uh, I'll tell you something, North, us North European types, we don't care if France goes bankrupt. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, Annie. Yeah. Right, so I think France is, uh, I didn't know this, but from the year 1000 AD to 1800 AD, actually France was the wealthiest place in Europe. I didn't know that, so they never told us these things. Uh, yeah. All right, Annie writes, uh, you didn't like that I'm gonna, oh. You didn't like it that I'm gonna do uh, less videos. Yeah, for a while, I'm just gonna take some breaks Maybe I'll do one good, good long video a, a week or so for a while. Uh, I think because I've been speaking almost nonstop for two and a half years, two years on TikTok. So I'm just taking a break from, uh, from daily updates. And, you know, I've been banned so much. I got so much, so much reporting. I got a little bit tired of that, but I will, I will continue pushing for my ideas. It's just, I'm just looking for the right platform the right way to do it you know mm. 
what part of the world do I think is the best place to live in? Uh, and it, for me, it would be a cold place with lots of forests. So that would be Northwestern Euro, Eurasia. So Scandinavia, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Northwest Russia. Yeah, places like that is where I would go. I think the best places to live would be far away from big cities, anywhere where you can survive on your own and stay away from the zombies. The zombie hordes, when they go hungry, they will come after you. Yeah, good point. Why are Africans yearning for Russia? Why can't Africa be Africa? Well, that's up to you. You make that decision. <laughs> Welcome to Finland. <laughs> Uh, do I follow any American Nat Sox? Uh, no, not really. I'm very different in this respect. I'm probably more of like a reactionary. And although, of course, I agree with a lot of what, what they stand for. Uh, probably not so much the, the, the social politics of it. I do feel that perhaps abandoning something like the gold standard in favor no no tying a gold standard to labor that's what they did and that's what i would support yeah can i think of any other safe havens for your people except for europe mm. i read a book about strategic relocation and the answer is you need to find uh, mountainous areas away from big cities and you can do that for example in the appalachians in the in the usa or uh, in Europe, the Alps, or in Norway, the, the fjords, but life is gonna be very, very hard there and not everybody can, can survive there. Only small groups of people, yeah. Right, I will do like live streams maybe once a week and I'll do a good video once a week or so. I'm just taking a break. I will, I will continue maybe when I feel new motivation. The thing is, I, uh, I've been on this digital platform for so long, I need to get out into the real world and have some real world alliances so that I can start speaking in the real world. But it is so difficult. I've not, I've never still have never really found any kind of outfit that I can join that can support me, but I hope to find one or start one. I think that's the guy, yeah. Joe Spalzo. I think that's him. Yeah. The book on strategic relocation. That's the one I read, I think. Africa can perhaps, you know, some Africans are smart. You can lead the industrialization and take over, take charge, take back charge from the Chinese and so on. It can be done, but you know, I don't live there. It's not up to me to do this. I have other things to do in Europe. I would want Europe, Northern Europe, basically to become a sort of Spartan race of people, a warrior people. And we just cut loose from globalism and say goodbye to the whole to the whole shit show, you know? Meaning also that we would cut loose from materialism. We become a, a religious people, uh, on, but f never afraid of death. We should be able to live in the face of death and feel comfortable facing death. This doesn't mean we're going to commit suicide. It actually means we are going to survive. I think the people who are scared in the face of death, they give up and they die. The people who are able to face death or to live in the face of death, without feeling afraid, but be, but still being able to focus on what is necessary. Those people survive. And so this is, this is going to be part of the religion I have in mind. Of course, we'll use Christianity, but Christianity needs to be reinterpreted a little bit for us in the North. So I'm, I'm thinking about long-term survival, you know? Right, you can't think of any groups that aren't honeypots either. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm thinking of several ways to break through into the mainstream. I am using music and I'm writing songs. So I, I sang one song now this week. 
Uh, I put a video on my TikTok. Uh, but of course, I will look for uh, better singers because I'm not the best singer, obviously. Uh, I think that might be one way to do it. If we start producing new music and new songs, we can reach the normal people, the normies, and maybe finally just change their minds, you know? Yeah, I make propaganda songs, yeah. <laughs> it's just how it is. Oh, you think I have a good voice? Okay, interesting, yeah. It depends, you know, if I sing with low volume and then my uh, my bass tones comes out, it's kind of okay. But if I sing louder, then it goes, ah! <laughs> and it goes wrong in the wrong direction very quickly. Yeah, General Patton, yeah, he knew. I think General Patton, they used him as a patsy. I think they just used him for uh, to motivate men to fight for him because he was a... Uh, on, he was something they could support, right? Someone they could support. But then, of course, he comes to Europe and he finds out what they're really doing here. And uh, he's like, oh, no. They tried to assassinate him. He was assassinated basically by the Secret Service, by the Americans themselves. They assassinated him once. He was driving a car and they, they blew up his car. He survived that. And then they killed him with morphine in the, in the hospital. They, they had to assassinate him twice to kill him. It's, it's just so evil. Uh... I got that from a book about General Patton. Don't know what the title was. Hmm. Yeah, you think it's good if I start my own uh, organization? Yeah, but then I don't have money. I'm not rich, so I can't, you know, how do I pay for protection? For example, uh, a basic bulletproof vest could be like $1,000. If I have to start investing in things like that, I need people with money to support me. Sadly, that's just how it is. We need some kind of, billionaire uh, in the shadows who will support all this crap so i'm going to look for that all right and you would need to have some religious outfits you need to have the basically the optimally you would have the the church on your side then you would be very powerful but the church is powerful and has its own its own plans nowadays so. Yeah, you thought Musk would be our hope? Yeah. I don't know. I think privately he wishes he could be our hope. But he ha he is such a rich man. He is invested in all these companies. He has to do what the small hats want sometimes. Yeah. Have I heard this theory that the uh, small hats helped found America in 1492? I don't know. They say that some people say that they all oh, Shakespeare was Jewish. Columbus was Jewish. And I'm like, mm, maybe that wasn't so. Maybe they're just lying. You know? No, I have not bought ripples. <laughs> yeah, Musk constantly has to uh, cater to the uh, SDG goals and the uh, World Economic Forum because his businesses rely on it. Otherwise, they might shut down his bank accounts and he'll, he'll be bankrupt. Uh, or his investors need him to do that. And that's why uh, he's not independent anymore. But someone like him could, of course, secretly somehow fund a real reactionary movement. I would call myself maybe a national restorationist. I just want to rebuild all the good things and do away with all the crap, you know. <laughs> Columbus wasn't, yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes you just don't know what to believe anymore because you have books that tell you this, books that tell you that, and it's just never really, you don't know. The new restoration period, yeah, restorationism. Because that's because conservatism doesn't conserve anything, hasn't conserved anything for a very long time. So what are we conserving? The pride flag? No, we're gonna have to restore some things and rebuild things. Reconstructionism, restorationism, yeah. And myself taught in music. Yeah, I taught myself uh, music production as a teenager. Uh, and I picked it up again uh, later in life. Yeah. Uh, I seem to, when I, when I make new music, 
beats are easy. You can have you have all sorts of tools to make beats, but melodies, of course, I find it quite easy to come up to conjure up new melodies, and that's of course a, a lucky skill to have that you can make music, right? So yeah, I do enjoy uh, I enjoy making music very much, but of course I want to have influence with it. So I'm going to use music, popular music, sometimes classical music, to uh, to try to change uh, change people really, especially my own people. I want them to wake up, wake up, you know. No, tell me about the frequencies. I think the owners of most banks are definitely elite type people who use central banks to offload their losses to the people. That's what's called inflation, really. When the super rich lose money, they simply make uh, normal people pay for their losses. And that's what the central bank does. They just print more money so that the rich can stay rich and the poor pay for it. King Leopold said that Christianity will help quell the African resistance spirit. Well, technically, they did the same thing to my people, the Germanic people. They gave us Christianity, too, and uh, it seems to have worked. But but here's the trick. You take this Christianity and you reinterpret it a, a little bit and you reform Christianity to make it into something very different. Uh, something like Herculeum or, uh, you know. All right, certain sounds make you feel certain things. Yeah, I'll pay attention to that. Why do you think the UK is struggling to wake up more than other nations? Uh, well, the United Kingdom is the center of Western power, really. It really is in London and the, uh, the British elites are surrounding it. Legend has it that the Federal Reserve in the US is owned by London bankers. So uh, they're siphoning wealth out of the US. Uh, what are they using the wealth for? Who knows? To fund all sorts of globalist operations because their plan, their, their ultimate goal is simply global hegemony. They want to rule the whole world. And if they can do that with financial slavery or whatever, they'll just do that. And so I think the UK has another problem is the the English people have always been somewhat passive. Uh, for example, vis-a-vis -vis the Romans, You know, you had Braveheart in Scotland, of course, fighting back. And the Irish fought back, but the English never did. The English simply uh, allowed all these waves of invaders to trample them. Maybe that's what's hard. And also, I think uh, the British, they have such a such strong culture of political correctness. Uh, it's so baked into your minds that you can't say what you really f want to say. Like Germans and Dutch people today are still very, very direct. Whereas English people, of course, they're very... Uh, Mm -hmm, you know, they can't be direct. And that's a problem if you want to overthrow, if you want, if you care about the truth, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I eat everything, but I try to make sure that I always have a good portions of meat because uh, meat and dairy cheese and milk and so on that's really yogurt i eat a lot of that because uh the grain uh, grain and sugar i think sugar is the biggest problem grain is somewhat of a problem grain wheat wheat enslaved people except for pastoralists the pastoralists are the only ones who actually live free because we rule the cattle and we do whatever we want right Yeah, red meat is absolutely important to be healthy. They, they tell you the opposite. They tell you not to eat red meat, but it's the healthiest food. It's nutrient dense, lots of energy in it, so you don't have to fill your stomach with it. You can just eat some 200 grams, 300 grams, and you're getting healthy, right? And you stay healthy. All right, I'm just relaxing a bit. Let's see if I uh, come up with things to talk about.
Do you, re do you really think that this idea of strategic relocation is possible? Yes, but not for everybody. It's going to be possible for the people who prepare for it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you can be one of those preppers, those people who prep for, uh, for collapse and catastrophe, you will succeed in relocation. Yeah, absolutely. There was a guy in, uh, in Belgium, Yannick Verdijk, in two or three years ago, he was shot by the police. Uh, he was a prepper. He was he was like a local leader trying to help his people. Yeah. I think there will be a collapse in Europe because um, Europe is just a market and an industry, an industrial zone. But Russia is trying to conquer Europe. So what are the Americans doing? They're moving industry out of Europe. So they move big businesses, corporations to the US, even to China, also to the Dubai, to the Arab world, basically stripping Europe of its industry. And then what happens is Europe becomes a wasted zone. Don't expect much fun here. Because <laughs> they, they're trying to remove our value, most valuable industry to prevent the Russians from seizing it. Uh, and which just tells you what Europe is. Europe is a colony of the USA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they call meat cancerous, but it's it's actually sugar. White sugar, table sugar is cancerous. It's really bad for you. So I never eat table sugar anyway. Yeah, the big cities in Western Europe are, are not really part of Europe anymore. Like London, Paris, don't feel European. The, the buildings are still European, but the people are not. So, Yeah, but we're not going to leave to Africa or India. We're, we should stay in the north and uh, capture the countryside where we can grow food and have our own water supply and so on. In fact, there's a good possibility that, say, rural resistors, uh, rural guerrilla warriors in Northern Europe might simply make a stand. But you will do this without these leftists. They don't have the body or the mentality to do something like this. But plenty of people will be able to fight back. There's lots of strong, aggressive men left in Europe who will be able to secure a good territory where we can live, you know. Yeah, the cities in Europe don't feel like Europe anymore, exactly. 50 years ago, London was London. It was like European, white, English, and now it's, you know, Pakistani, Hindu, and Indian. It's not what it was now. I personally couldn't care less about the so-called wealth in all these cities. Uh, I care more about time and space, fresh air and fresh water, and... You know, you'll get that by leaving the cities. Right, right. It's it's amazing how quickly these cities transport. But it also it is also important to keep in mind that although the cities of Europe are rapidly uh, diversifying, uh, the cities are not the future anyway. So these people, where are they going to go next? They will either have to take take the countryside, in which case we're going to have to fight back. We're going to fight back eventually. Yeah? My favorite political figure is uh, Otto von Bismarck, the German unifier who united uh, Germany. He was like the last real Germanic Hauptmann, the real Germanic leader. After that, we all got these Anglo people. The countryside is the future because that's where you get your food and water and your resources are all there. Whereas you can't survive in uh, Manhattan, New York City, expecting the supermarkets to be supplied. The supply lines will break down. So imagine a city like New York City. How does it exist at all? Well, because every day trains full of food drive into the city to supply the supermarkets. But where does that food come from? Well, it comes from far away. It comes from uh, hundreds or thousands of miles away, mostly. Uh, lots of it is shipped in by plane and so on. And so you, you know, you realize where you have to be. You have to be, you have to have pastures for cattle or you need to have uh, some other kind of land for, uh, for wheat and grain. So that's why I always think like that. Yeah, you need to be closer to nature uh, and be able to defend it. 
and that's going to be a bit difficult uh, especially in the med in the immediate aftermath after the zombie apocalypse when the supply chains collapse people are going to be uh in a sort of m mad max race that might be very very violent yeah but then again the decline might not be uh might not come in a big shock it might come slowly and then we'll, if it comes slowly then we're looking at a very painful future a very slow dying painful future and then uh the smart people of course they should move out of this and simply start over before the collapse has come right yeah the competency crisis is of course very real so a lot of the people the migrants coming to the west they can't take over what we've built it's just over but it's it's a combination of all these things you know it's uh the fact that we've maximized our economies you can adding more people used to grow the economy but now we've reached the point of saturation adding more people to the west doesn't grow our economies anymore our economies are going to dwindle anyway so that's the difficulty. The idea that economies would always keep growing is so baked into political systems because the rich only care about making more money, right? It's just nuts. It's just nuts. All right, I'm getting a bit tired, so I'm going to close the stream, and I'll see you uh, probably in a week or so. I'll do this weekly, I think. So uh, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me this time. Thanks for uh, chatting, and then uh, keep thinking about what we're going to do. We're going to have to build our own organization, our own leadership hierarchies, and we have to decide on what we are really trying to achieve, and that's going to be tricky because you can't predict the future but you have to make a really big plan anyway all right see ya